and aloha. Good morning to the, I guess, the first edition of um, no, no, Hawaii in uniform. And uh, this is a program that's going to be bringing you information about what's happening in the veterans and military community. Uh, for those of you who may be familiar with me, I've been on a couple different mediums, and one of the things was my earpiece here. One of the things that I try to do, and I try to make uh, abundantly clear to the public, is that any program that I hold, if there's any information that we provide, either myself or my guests, that you may feel that is an error, uh, they think there's a contact number that you can contact here and, um, you know, express yourself anyhow. But uh, here we're trying to be informative, not inflammatory. Uh, there's a lot of things we will be talking about, that we have a lot of good people in the military and veterans community who may not be aware of some of the um, programs that's available to them and some of the organizations. Just like this morning, we have uh, my in-studio guest, Mr. John Eipert, who is the past national president for the Fleet Reserve Association and also a member of Branch 46. And uh, also we'll be talking with Mr. Don Larson, who is the current uh, national president for the Fleet Reserve Association. And right now I want to introduce to the program Mr. John Eipert. And John, thanks for joining us on the program. It's my honor to be here. Thank you Good. for having me. Uh, could you tell our viewers and our listeners some of the things that you're your past? I know that you were the past uh, uh, national president for the Fleet Reserve Association. Okay. And could you tell us a little bit about the organization and its mission before we talk to Don? Okay, well, my name is John Eipert, as it's been already stated. I uh, retired from the Navy in 1986, and the Fleet Reserve Association is another way for me to serve the military and serve their families. Mm -hmm. uh, the Fleet Reserve Association, which I've been a member for 30 years now, is a military service organization, and we have a strong advocate on Capitol Hill for our elected representatives, and we represent uh, the enlisted portions of the Navy, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard, both the uh, reserve, retired, and active duty components of them. Uh, as a member of Branch 46, uh, we have a lot of things going on, but maybe we can talk about that a little later. But as, as far as I'm concerned, uh, this has been my passion for the last 30 years, and uh, I always do whatever I can to uh, promote the Fleet Reserve Association. Mm -hmm. uh, We've done a lot politically over the years. My involvement when I was national president 2014-2015 is I got to meet with Vice President Joe Biden on Capitol Hill uh, for a breakfast on Veterans Day. Mm -hmm. I met with uh, the Secretary of uh, the Veterans Administration, uh, Secretary McDonald, right. and uh, <coughs> other members of our staff in Washington speak daily to our congressional representatives in Congress to promote uh, issues concerning enlisted uh, sea service personnel. Yeah, uh, that's, I think a lot of things that go here, we have like a close to, we have more than 120,000 give or take veterans here in the state of Hawaii who may not, you know, are not aware fully of like some, not only the Fleet Reserve, but some of the organizations. Uh, because as you mentioned that as far as with the different groups, they do go to Washington to represent the interests of the um, veterans and right. also address certain uh, issues concerning our active duty right. people because one day they're going to be veterans also. Um, yeah, like I said, I, did, like I, said, I learned, uh, the longer I've been over here and the more I learned about the organizations, um, I'm really impressed with some of the dedication of individuals like yourself and uh, we have a lot of unsung heroes, like say within the veterans community, you know, that help Absolutely. to do what they can. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, I tell you right now. I want to introduce to the program Mr. Don Larson, who's the current um, national president for the Fleet Reserve Association. And Mr. Larson, thank you for joining us. Uh, may I call you Don? You may, please. Thank you so much. Okay. Yes, I'm, I'm Don Larson, and uh, I'm down here in Corpus Christi, Texas. Uh, uh, howdy, uh, hola, from, uh, from Southern Texas. Uh, a little chilly day down here, but yes, I'm the national president this year and it's a great honor to be part of the veteran association especially the freight reserve association right i feel like many from your listening audience this morning i belong to several veterans associations about seven altogether and i'm active in in three of them uh presently uh obviously very active in the reserve association but it's the veterans associations that are the voice on capitol hill for the veterans their families the active duty personnel uh, for the most part, I know we'll have a discussion here, but for the most part, less than one in four of our congressmen mm -hmm. ever served their country. And uh, uh, several of those, no disrespect, but they were 
that, that our veterans were in reserves. I didn't, and they didn't quite not not, to, not disrespect anyone. But they didn't go through what a lot of the active duty and our, our uh, veterans went through themselves as far as deployments, time away, coming back from a deployment, and having their son or their daughter hiding behind their spouse's mm-hmm. uh, backside because they didn't recognize their father or their mother. You can't right. imagine how heartbreaking that is for your own child to be afraid of you. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's the, the veterans that had to put in a full day on the ship at their command at their post and then did a part-time job that night to help bring money to the to the family. Mm-hmm. That's the veterans associations that educate Congress, tell them what it's like, why they need to push the bills, and why they're pushing these bills for our, our military. Yeah. Thank you. I know that um, with the, as you mentioned, like I said, there's very few, uh, rel- compared to past generations, there's not that many uh, elected officials who are, uh, have served anyhow. And I know that even with the uh, with the general public, like uh, was it I don't know, 2% of the population that serves in the military right now or has any type of connection with the military? Is that correct or am I incorrect about that? You're spot on. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because I think that, um, yeah, that's one of the things as far as it seemed like a disconnect. A lot of people think that people in the military are living the high on the hog as far as with their benefits and everything else. But there's a lot of issues that come up that the public is not really aware of that um, I know that you and um, uh, D- John and a lot of the people are trying to make our elected officials aware of. But also, I think it's also incumbent upon the public to take upon themselves also to learn about what's happening with our military because these are the people, the men and women who serve our country. Uh, a lot of them are not, they're not in it for the, uh, you know, for the accolades or for the, the money, or as they, a lot of people are misinformed about the big benefits and all that, but they're there to serve their country. And I mean, they actively, I mean, we hear all kinds of stories about people who gave up different lucrative careers to serve their country. And I think that, uh, you know, we as members, of course, of the veterans community and also the uh, general public need to make sure that our elected officials hold, we hold their feet to the fire to make sure that all the benefits and rights that these people have earned are given and not taken away. And I don't want you to you can correct me on either point that I missed or. Good job, Calvin. Uh, one thing that a lot of, another going along with what you said, what people don't understand is uh, it may seem uh, lucrative, some of the pay and allowances they're getting now, which believe me is below what com- a comparable civil service person might get. Right. But when you spend a year away from your family, like I did when I was in Vietnam, and others now in desert, in the uh, in Afghanistan and Iraq and other places where it's two and three deployments, about six to eight yeah. months each, that's something you can't quantify. Mm-hmm. But it is a sacrifice they make, and a lot of them go back more than just once. Yeah. And uh, it says a lot for their character and their patriotism. Yeah. Uh, Don, I know that uh, with each new administration, everybody brings something personal to the table that they have uh, that they're concerned about. As a national president, with your tenure, what are some of the things that you're going to zero in that um, you know are really close to your heart, or that you've been made aware of by your association with the um, the members on the local levels? Local levels, well, on a national level, first of all, if I may, is that we're concerned. We've been in this concern for many years now. And it's not just our associations, all the associations, and it's a lot of the public associations and uh, gatherings as well as the lack of membership, the mm-hmm. recent membership. That's our primary concern. And because with, with that, it's it's like uh, Christmas season just being, well, not Christmas season, but we're losing our voice. And with that, there's no little uh, Dr. Seuss uh, fabe with uh, Horton Hears a Who. Mm-hmm. And it's that little uh, Susie. The, the in the fade, there's someone saying that we are here, we are here, and the word's not getting out. Mm-hmm. The word's not getting out. And that to me, that's the veterans associations. Yeah. The word to Congress, to Capitol Hill, is not getting out. That we are here. We're putting our lives on the line. We're committing ourselves to our country and to our, our fellow uh, citizens. Mm-hmm. And we we need support. We need support for ourselves. We need support for our military, our equipment. Yeah beans, bullets, and band-aids that we need to, to complete our mission. And with that, we need support for our family who we left behind, as as John stated. Yeah. yeah. And increasing membership. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, I think because you know, with the membership, it seems that, yeah, it's, it's dwindling overall, you know, and um, it, of course, like I said, we're all trying to work to get, you know, get more people into the organizations, make them aware of what's happening. But also know, like I said, besides what's happening with the, um, with the veterans and, of course, the active duty people, the one thing that uh, a lot of people fail to realize is the, the dedication and the sacrifices that the dependents make you know, in support of the, uh, of the troops, you know, and, um, you know, active duty wise, and like say on the civilian side, it, but, uh, I mean, with the, uh, the veterans community, of course, we have a lot of issues that have been going on with the VA that um, the more we talk about, it seems there's more things that develop. And, um, you know, I, I think, again, like I say, it takes some public awareness, like I say, to put pressure on those who are in power or have the, uh, the influence uh, to make sure, you know, like I say, that all these different that are people taking care of, you know, because, again, these people, you know, they're not asking for anything, and the majority of the time, when you talk to a veteran, no matter how bad off they are, the majority of them will say, well, look, why don't you help out another veteran, you know, or help out my battle buddy, something like that, you know. But um, what is... Uh, Kelvin, if I may, Kelvin, yeah. if I may, you're, you're spot on with that. You are spot on with that. A uh, misconception of the Fleet Reserve Association is that, with our active duty and our, is that you must be retired to retired from the military and transferred into the fleet reserve mm. to be a member and that's entirely incorrect back in 1924 a bunch of our chiefs and senior enlisted personnel went to congress we got congress to uh, recognize the fleet reserve association desired or want as far as enhancing the benefits of the then enlisted male sailor mm -hmm. and our, pro our pro to go forward our primary purpose is to keep our men and women in the sea services in uniform, Navy, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard. And of course, any benefits that we get through Congress uh, go through to all the, the the Air Force, the Army personnel, and the officers as well. Mm -hmm. But it's to keep them in uniform so that they have benefits to, to uh, after they retire, mm -hmm. after they're 20 years in the service, 20, 30 years in the service. And, and with that is that we're educating, we're trying to get the bills passed. As you mentioned, as far as the veterans saying, I, I, I don't need that, give it to another veteran. That's one of our problems we're facing too with the, with the VA. We're all very aware of that. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of problems going on with the VA. There's a lot of great things, a lot of outstanding things the VA does for our service members and their families also. Mm -hmm. But a lot of our veterans say, well, I'm not gonna sign up for VA healthcare because I have my TRICARE or I, uh, I'm a teacher, I have my teacher's insurance, I have firefighter's insurance, I have some other kind of uh, military, uh, some kind of insurance policy. Less well, fine and dandy, but we still need its numbers. It's all about numbers. We, yeah. still, we still need those veterans to sign up, enroll in VA health care so that the, the VA sees the need for the veterans. Come in once a year, get a flu shot. But the more people that are signed up, enrolled, the more money that is put into the program for healthcare, for doctors, for buildings, for research, for people. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, there's one of the, they mentioned as far as getting people signed up. They actually, some people yeah, may be better, better off than some other veterans or whatever, but they just see old bills saying use it or lose it, you know. And I encourage people, you know, who are, have benefits or, you know, are entitled to them, go sign up for them. I mean, even if you don't want to use them, you know, at least, you know, they're aware of the numbers that's out there and the possibility because sometime in the future anything could change where you know you may need the services you may not be able to afford it or whatever so but so by being in the system you know it does something you know to recognize like I said the numbers is out there one other thing I, want, I wanted to touch on also we have of course our female military personnel active and uh, the veterans is there anything in that do you see any changes coming about because there's some very unique issues uh, related to our female um, service members and veterans. Are you uh, or the organization or organization in total trying to do something to make, you know, more of awareness, I'm like say something positive that's going to help our, you know, our female personnel? John, you have an answer for that one? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay, we're going to take a short break, I guess, and we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Stan Energy Man, and I want you to be here every Friday. Noon. ThinkTechHawaii.com. Watch the show. Be there. I pity the fool who ain't. Hi, I'm Jay Fidel. That's Ted Ralston. You know, Ted is the uh, host of Where the Road Leads. It shows uh, every Friday from 4 to 5 p.m. 
It's about technology. It's about how people collaborating and solve problems with modern technology. It's where the road leads. We all know that. We should all be listening. Join us there, 4 to 5 p.m. every Friday. Now, what about that do you agree with? All of it. I knew he'd say that. Aloha. Say aloha. Aloha. Good. Aloha. My name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. Welcome. We are co-hosts of a show called Keys to Success, which is live on the Think Tech Live Network series, weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. We're looking forward to seeing you then. Aloha. Okay, and you're back with Hawaiian uniform. And again, my host, I mean, I'm the host, Calvin Griffin, at this point right now. And my guest, John Eifert, Pat, the former uh, president of the National President for the Fleet Reserve, and uh, Mr. Don Larson, who's the current um, uh, president for the fleet. Okay, we're going to continue our conversation as I brought up about our female um, veterans and military personnel. John, you had a comment on that? Uh, yes. Um, several years ago, I might be dating myself, maybe 20 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, the thought of having a female in the Fleet Reserve Association or on submarines or even combatant ships mm -hmm. was unheard of. But it's happening. It's happening. It's quite routine now for surface ships, and they're just now uh, allowing females onto uh, submarines. Mm -hmm. um, it's happening, it's going to happen, it's a fact of life. And as far as the FRA cons is concerned, there was a, a, a reluctance initially to put have females uh, be members of the Fleet Reserve Association considered a, a good old boys club. Yeah. But a lot of us said, no, that's not the way it is. In mm -hmm. fact, we were instrumental in having one of the first female presidents of a local branch mm -hmm. back in, I think it was 1994 mm -hmm. or somewhere thereabouts. And the way we try to promote females is to lift them up and make them more inclusive in what we do and how we, how, and ha they have a voice in how we do things. Yeah. And they've been very instrumental in that. We've had a number of females over the past several years that's, that's uh, filled major leadership roles at the regional mm -hmm. and local levels. And uh, we certainly are proud of all our shipmates, male or female. Yeah, like I say, a lot of um, very dedicated female, I mean, like females, yeah. uh, you know, that are out there that do their thing. I mean, it's been going on for the history of the, mil the U.S. military you know, right. of our country, you know. They didn't have even got the recognition that they needed, you know. And nowadays, of course, with so many political things going on, and we don't want to get into that right now, but uh, at some point, you know, we'll be in future programs anyhow. But um, politics aside, you know, it's, uh, it's not a social experiment. These are people, female, these are individuals who happen to be of, you know, female persuasion that really want to do something for their country, you know. And right. we need to do the best we can, of course, to make sure that their rights and interests, unique, you know, are properly addressed. Uh, Don, is there anything on Horizon? Uh, what's new on Horizon overall, like say with the organization, uh, or something you want to impart to us? Well, overall, as I, as I mentioned there, Calvin, is, is the membership. Without, without the mm -hmm. membership, without the voice, it's, it's hard, it's hard to, to move forward. Yeah. Um, we, we need that. We, we need that for the uh, forward mobility. Yeah. Uh, okay. I know we're, we're also getting to, we're getting a little bit down to the wire anyhow, but I wanted. Uh, to zero in right now on Branch 46, the local uh, Fleet Reserve Association. I know that there's a um, effort afoot right now to go ahead and, um, I guess, to say to save the branch. Right. Could you tell right. us a little bit about that and how the public or the uh, not only the veterans but the public in general can help out? Right. First of all, our branch is located at the corner of Valkenburg and Nimitz, 891 Valkenburg. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been there since 1988. Uh, the Navy leased us to land and uh, we built a permanent residence on it. Mm -hmm. Cost a million dollars. We were able to raise the money then, but we had a lot more members then. Mm -hmm. Three years ago, approximately three years now, maybe three and a half, the Navy decided, and our lease is up, yeah. they decided that the land was excess and they wanted to get rid of it. They gave us, so they were going to sell it, and they gave us first right to refuse. Mm -hmm. So we are in a campaign right now to try to raise money to keep our branch. Mm -hmm. The Navy wants $650, $1,000 for the land, which mm -hmm. is reasonable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> An acre on, on Nimitz in that area, yeah. yes, very reasonable. However, we are a grassroots organization that uh, 
doesn't have a lot of rich people in it, and so far we've only been able to raise around two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Right. So we're short. Mm -hmm. So our land acquisition committee is in the process now of coming up with more and more fundraisers, mm -hmm. and uh, collaborating with uh, national headquarters to involve other regional presidents of the FRA to see what they can do monetarily. Mm -hmm. uh, businesses in the area, the Holy Family Catholic Church has offered to help us out. Yeah. But still, we're far short of our goal, and we only have a year and two months left to make that goal. Yeah. So any help anybody can give us, uh, either through your knowledge of marketing mm -hmm. or financially or any other way, volunteer to right. help with fundraisers, mm -hmm. just contact me at 371-6843, mm -hmm. and uh, I'd really appreciate it. 808-371-6843. Okay. Don, uh, speaking of what the branches, what they're going through here, uh, across the country, there, are there other branches, <coughs> excuse me, that are going through similar problems or, and because of the lack of awareness about the, the overall situation? The FRA, like American Legion, like the VFW, like the other veterans associations, yes, a lot are going through the same problems. Are the mean age of the uh, veterans People in the, the Veteran Association right now is, is in the 80s. Mm -hmm. uh, the younger, the older shipmates, uh, they're, they're tired, they're worn out. They've been doing this for many years, and the young, younger veterans aren't getting involved with this. So the branches are having to shut down just because they cannot continue to do business right. without that younger veteran. In uh, so yes, uh, it's not just money, but it's it's manpower. It's someone to do the to do the job to do the position. Mm -hmm. I'd like to invite the, the uh, your listeners to look at our website, and it's the old www.fra.org. That's fra.org. Mm -hmm. They can find more information of the association on there. There's an adversary where they can go in there to see the bills that are going before Capitol Hill. I'm going to guess that a lot of your listeners have no idea who their congressmen, congresswomen are. Mm -hmm. This will help them identify who they need to contact for bills. Yeah. Okay, yeah, because one of the things I noticed that, excuse me, <clears throat> with the uh, fleet locally, uh, the people that, you know, that gather there, uh, come through there, uh, these people are very community-minded, and a lot of people, you know, may not be aware of, like, say, the extent that veterans get involved in local, you know, organizations, you know, helping to support the, um, you know, the general population, because one thing is about the, you know, service, giving back, you know, because when they take the uniforms off, you know, that spirit or that, you know, that sense of wanting to give back doesn't end, you know. And I think that's one thing that a lot of people don't realize how fortunate they are when they do have veterans in the community, you know, that because of their past experiences in other countries and everything else, they have a reference point in dealing, you know, with certain social and economic things and the dep deprivation that they've seen in other countries. And it's like, you know, you come home and you want to give back, you know. And again, a lot of people, again, uh, they go unsung, they're going to go unnoticed because many of them do not want to be recognized, you know. But at some point, you know, we, it doesn't hurt, you know, like, say, to, you know, acknowledge that they are a veteran or, you know, you walk them and say thank you. But um, the veterans have a major impact in our communities, you know, not in a very positive way. We hear about a lot of the, some of the negative things that happen with the homelessness and things of that nature. But again, that's a different subject matter to talk about. But overall, when they do come back, they do have that spirit. They maintain that spirit of giving and patriotism that they try to impart to the children and the community. And they do it. They walk the walk and they talk the talk. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. And I believe, Kelvin, too, you'll find that if you pull your, your firemen, your placemen, your volunteers, the, the civil uh, servants, yeah. you'll find that a lot of these men and women yeah. are part of the military. You are spot on. All right. Okay. Uh, hey, Calvin, if I may, I forgot to mention, I mentioned my phone number, but we also have a local uh, website. It's called www.frabranch46.org. Okay. And that uh, also has a donation page and other information about our situation. Okay. www.frabranch46.org. Okay. All right. Don, I think we might be down to about 20 seconds anyhow. Any final uh, messages in uh, 30, in 20 seconds or less? No, I just want to thank you for this, and I just want to thank all the veterans. And, and as you mentioned earlier, I want to really want to thank all the, the veterans, the spouses, mm -hmm. for all you did to keep the home fires burning yep. so that your husband, your wife could go out there and take care of the country and do their job 
thank you for taking care of the home and the family. God bless y'all. Okay, President Larson, uh, Don and John, thanks for joining me on the program, and I want to thank the honor. viewers for um, tuning in, and hopefully like, in the future we'll bring some more programs that will be informative uh, and beneficial not only to the veterans and military of our community, but also the community in general. And I'm glad I have the opportunity to be here. So.